So this character here is pretty much like one of the first uh, idea of the blocking that I had. And you see, like, not everything was like, like, figure it out, right? And it became like this. But like doing this portion here took me like one day, basically, like not even one day, I'd say one day. Um, and now it's like, uh, okay, well, I've been spending like so much time getting to here. But when you think about it, especially at like this level here, like we can already understand, like we can already understand the shape of the character and uh and that sort of stuff like the intention the concept like a lot is represented into like this here right now like like don't don't pay too much mind to the fact that i've like played with like the shapes and stuff but like the difference between this and this is basically like the detailing and we can't even like tell the difference in terms of the polishing so like when you talk about like the intention of things i mean it's like all the intention is already there right now. Um, so, like, for example, if I was, like, a concept artist, I mean, this would be more than enough to start, like, drawing and adding the details in, into drawing, right? But since, since I'm a 3D artist and I like to polish things and I like to print them later, well, I'll go through the fucking gauntlet of spending X amount of time on top of that just to make it look good. And... This is crazy. And I should go to prison for spending so much time working on the same thing. <laughs> I'd, I'd be facetious. But what I mean by that is just like, it takes so much time. But you know what? Well, I'm having fun, so not complaining. <sighs> Amo. Hello, Marco. Love to seek. I love the sneak peek in the new character. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, man. Uh, I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, Mo. Thanks for asking. I'm. Um, I've been. Um, I've been. Uh, it's been a hard. Uh, been hard lately and stuff, uh, but uh, some some things are starting to get better. So it's starting to be a little bit better. Uh, still very bummed out with the whole situation that's happening. Uh, worldly for sure but um, I'm enough in a good mood right now to be able to provide you with quality stream so at least there's that I'll say I hope that you're doing fine as well SKR yes but we were together that's right that's true we were together hands in hands I mean some people has been have been here like since the super beginning so it's awesome Straight to jail, Josh, please. Josh, please, please, don't, don't put me to jail. <laughs> All right, so what do we say we get started on that? Okay. A little spoiler about the new character. Um, well, that's the thing. I'm, um, I'm either going to start uh, my character from my Archangel series, um, or I'm going to start uh, a character based on um elden rings because i'm playing elden rings right now and i'm having so much fun so it would be kind of cool to um to do something like that i'll know I, I know that if i do something about elden ring i'll be super motivated because i'm really like passioned by this for the moment so uh we'll see i might like i said like, like i said last time i might do um frog from chrono trigger in the world of um, in the world of Elden Rings. That, would, that, that could be cool. I think I would have fun doing that. Something like that. We'll see. Uh, all right. Sounds good. Dukes, Dukes. Duke, Dukes. All right. Let's do this. Let's get into it. So, the head. The head is the last thing I like to finish with the head if you know what I mean get it um so uh yeah <laughs> that's so fucking stupid I'm sorry I'm sorry for people 
Uh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't encourage me too much. On gaming console or PC? Uh, PC. And I get those little, like, lags here and there. I have, like, a pretty good PC, but um, uh, it's okay. It's not game-breaking. It's fine. It looks good, though. Uh, uh. <laughs> hey there, Marco. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. Thanks for asking, Dalton. Talden. Sorry. Dyslexia. Um, I hope that you are doing well as well. Josh, don't encourage me. I have many more jokes like this. All right, so here we have uh, the character. Um, already the main parts are all like uh, disconnected and whatnot, but uh, I think that for the head, I'm going to probably need to maybe give it like another design detail pass. Thanks for the follow. I gotta save him up. Can't let all in the wild. <laughs> yes, I know. Where's uh, Pete? Pete, mon ami. Content at voir ici. All right. So yeah. So for the head, um, I'm yeah. Like I said, I'm probably gonna have to like start separating in few pieces. But before I do that, I feel like the head is kind of like maybe missing a few of the um, like important um, separation and detailing that like other models have. So what I'll do is I'll actually load um, the wasp. As kind of like um like I mean I have like reference on my other screen but uh, sometimes I like to have the reference like in my uh, ZBrush viewport. It's a neat little thing that they they added in ZBrush to be able to just like add a screenshot there. So uh, let's do that. And stay for long. The journey to become Elden Ring is Elden Ring is calling me. Yeah, I hear that. Um, I just killed a uh, Godfrey, God a uh, Godric. Uh, yesterday. That's where I am in the game. I think I'm going to go explore uh, Kylid next, maybe. Or go north. Kylid looks like really rough. I'm not sure if I'm leveled for that yet. Pete, that's so nice. It's so nice. Thank you. You are the wing, the wind beneath, beneath my wing, Pete. Hey, thanks for the follow. All right, so I'll have this little guy here watching over the mantis. There you go. So in the end, I'm going to probably want to actually have like as much like separations in the head and everything. It's it's nice to have like. Um, um details that attract the attention towards the head so uh that's what i'm going to, to aim to do uh yeah all right all right all right 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 let's get started uh, i'm going to start by doing a couple of uh things like adding a few um imms just to like to to, to, to use as like uh like places that are going to probably like dictate general shapes like so like this like cylinder here it's going to be like a pretty important aspect of the head and i'm i like to add primitive shapes first to my design and then work around them uh, because some shapes are more like organic and freestyle and those are kind of like easy to like to use as like connecting pieces between like details and like uh, between important details I should not be, maybe say details, but shapes. So like this cylinder here uh, is a pretty important one. So I'll actually uh, go and grab uh, like things like, for example, I can literally go grab the, the wasps um, cylinder part here. And uh, like, oh, wow, I lost my screenshot. Weird. All right. So what I'll do is I'll actually uh, commit the subdivision, this part, and this part as well. Well, this one is already subdivision. Uh, merge them and uh, actually add them to my... Um... 
and also like the like uh, the the um, the mouth part i've been reusing it from uh for every um for every uh, insectoids like uh like you have the wasp you have uh the beetle you see it's kind of like using almost the same uh, same assets and this one as well and um i like to have that and uh, I, I kind of like repeat myself but whatever but like i like to have like those elements that repeat from one character to the other just to use as like a like a binding agent between uh between the designs so uh that's what i'm going to do hey cast mason i'm a character artist and i have been following you for years now i want to know this process is more to create beauty shots and not for game process correct um well, I mean you could do both. I'm not going to insert it in a game because I'm that's not the part that I like. I'd rather just like do a little like a render like this in Keyshot or in ZBrush and call it a night. But uh if I was to put it in game, I could put it in the in game. I actually have a somewhat of a like um in game version of the wasp already created. Um that's made from like automation processes of like like mesh creation, mesh topology, and that sort of stuff, but um, um, I never really used it, or the people that I sent to never really used it yet. Uh, I'd like to see him in action, but uh, yeah, at the same time, to be honest, yeah, so kind of like to answer your question. Uh, I, I didn't really uh, consider the characters for motion, for animation, because if I would have wanted to have to have them for motions and animation i would have actually make a test model first that i would have sent to um a rigor skinner and animator to make uh like test movements to make sure that like the the everything on the character can move well and since i did not do that because i knew that i was just going to pose the character by myself using my own techniques uh I don't have like a guarantee that like the character would actually uh, animate well, and um, so so yeah. So I I could say that it's actually not game ready in that sense. So what I'll do is I'll split those two. Duplicate this and uh, use this rotation point to rotate. Oops, oof, this axis is off. Hot damn, hot damn. Hey, first time chatter. Uh, you know, someone is a real ZBrush veteran when they use the transpose line and that thick as well. <laughs> yeah. Well said. <laughs> I started using ZBrush at version 3.1, and uh, I know that like some people. I remember some people telling me like, Peh, "Man, you're such like a new uh, a new user." If the first version was three point one, and then they talk about like the two point D, the the two point five D era and stuff, and uh, that's funny. It really ages me. I find. I was oh my god today. I was thinking about a memory from when I was at school. At school for 3D art, and uh, every time I have those, like I get really like a strike of nostalgia. As much as I get just like a <laughs> a punch in the face, like just like showing how old I am now, and um, and uh, well, I how old how old compared to what I was before. I'm not that old. Um, some people would be like. 
super insulted to consider to think that like I consider myself old. Um, but all that to say that uh, you know I had this memory from when I was at school and uh, we were listening to uh, my, my our teacher made us listen to songs that um, songs that were meant to be like inspiring and um, the idea was that we it was a, our, a creative class and uh, we had to do like three drawings. Uh, based on three different uh, songs and um, I don't remember the two other songs I just remember like this one song that was um, a, I don't remember the name of the um, of the the musician I think that the the, the name of the musician is like like that uh, something like Dance of Death, and I'm not talking about the um, the uh, the the synth synth wave metal band Dance of the Dead. I'm, it's it's uh, it's like new age music, like super calm and like hippie, like transcendental music. And uh, it, actually, it, it's um, it's for those who saw the movie Baraka, um, it's in that movie. Like the movie Baraka, it's like a, it's a, it's a video only movie. There's no, like, well, I mean, there's music, but they're like, nobody's talking. And it's like a, it's like a movie that like shows like images of nature. And then it like just, just supposes them with like images of, um, like capit capitalist industry, um, manufacturing, uh, urban, uh, well, the the whole like shebang, and um, so it, it's like um, it has like this kind of like um, politic, not political, but kind of like just like trying to say like, hey, maybe we should uh, we should um, take care of the planet Earth, right, guys? Um, it's a great movie, actually. It really um, sensibilizes you to um, the things of that nature. I find, um, and there is actually this the song plays in that movie so if you saw that 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 movie and you remember the songs it's it's one of them um maybe i could sing it to you nope <laughs> but um yeah there was this song and it was such a beautiful song and i remember like drawing a picture um based on that it was really it was a beautiful thing i find it, it it really moved me and um yeah i really had fun doing that it, it it felt good to remember that uh, that moment that's i guess that's what i'm trying to say and um so yeah there was other exercises that this teacher was making us do um this teacher was really nice he's he really he's really the one that encouraged me to pursue being a character artist even if it was uh, hard to get in that industry so uh, i really owe him a lot uh, stefan demel that's his name so uh yeah that's uh one of the people in my life that really pushed me to to become who i am right now so i i owe him i owe him the, that um and yeah another creative uh class uh, or exercise that he was making us do is uh for like two months three months we had to make a journal in in every week at in every week we had to draw a picture in our journal and the picture had to be um made from made from um i don't know I, I i think it's called exquisite cadaver which is basically like a artistic exercise i guess you could call that call it that and uh, it's basically like you need to find like a or a random sentence generator that gives you like a sentence made of like two noun one verb and one location and um so it just random randomly like will give you something like for example like like the the cybernetic ninja watches a newscaster shaman in like in like a sewer 
for example, like it's going to say like in a sentence like this. And basically what you have to do is you have to take the sentence, you interpret it the way you want. You can interpret it either literally or, um, yeah, so like either like literally or you figuratively and you make a picture out of that and uh, an image a drawing. And uh, that was so fun. That was a lot of fun. And um, I've never, I never was like a very good uh, drawer, but I remember, um, I remember drawing, um, like having a lot of fun drawing those. And I, I thought that like some of the images actually were not bad at all. I was pretty happy of the result. Um, nowadays, I'm not a better, I'm not better at drawing than I was before. I am a thousand times better at sculpting than I was before. But um, I remember like that being like a cool exercise and something that I would absolutely do again. I highly recommend it. Especially for like those who are like are drawing for fun, like it would be such a nice activity to kind of like have like a find a sentence, like a generated sentence, and like having to do like a a drawing based on that, like a sculpting based on that would be like very time consuming <laughs> for the kind of exercise that it is. But uh, drawing, uh, I would always be interested to see that. That's the kind of stuff that, like, sometimes I think I'm like, oh my god, that would be cool to, like, with the the community that I'm building, uh, create like contests and stuff. I have some ideas of contests, like giving some of my STLs to some people that have printers and that paint to actually like have them paint and have like this like context contest or whatever. That could be great, and it would be like judged by. Uh, people working at Chaos Masons, including me, maybe Cedric. There's like st stuff like that we want to do. Um, right now we're we're trying to. Uh, right now is like kind of like a hard pass, so we need to get over it. But um, once everything is going to be smooth and whatever, we can start to think about like things like that again. Could be fun. Do I use Threadripper CPU? I think I have a Threadripper CPU. I'm not sure. I'm not really good with computer stuff, but as, as far as I know, uh, it's Threadripper. And you, you know what? Do not quote me on that. I might actually be uh, lying. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not lying, but I just mean like I might be wrong. All right, 41 people. That's cool. All right, let's uh let's lay down the talking a little bit and uh let's concentrate on advancing because I've been looking at what I'm doing and not advancing for a little bit too much now.
So I'm going to continue in kind of like the, the teasing area that I've been uh, starting. Because I can't talk about it more than that. But we're working with a client right now. And the game we're working on is so fucking cool. I can't wait to see the uh the finished product because oh my god it's cool it's really great i can't wait to see like what it's going to give in the end and um we're really lucky because like we're we've been working on like a lot of cool projects uh recently like things that chaos masons they just get better and better and better like each year's, each year's, and uh, I mean we've we already worked on some pretty cool projects in the past, um, but um, but the thing that like we're working on right now, sometimes we just like have like those like dream projects that fall on our laps, and um, it's really fun. It's really fun because it makes me really excited for the future, like. It's fun to see that, like, oh, you got somewhere and then you're super proud of, and it's like not even like the end of the, the end of the rainbow yet. So, um, yeah, like we were uh, working on that game earlier today, and I was just like contemplating, like the quality and of everything, and like the the. the necessarily like the quality of what we're doing i mean yes we're doing quality work but i just mean like the like how cool the whole thing is uh, man super cool uh hi did you have problem pressure sensitivity in zbrush uh, no, I don't have that. Um, is it because maybe you have like you've set your computer to like low performance? I had like one time like a problem with ZBrush, and I remember it's because I put my my computer to um, like energy saving, and um, what happens is that like ZBrush is going to start to lag after a few minutes uh, because you're in energy saving mode, and basically what it does is that it like shuts down a, a couple of your your com your CPUs. Because it doesn't consider ZBrush as like a software that like requires high CPU usage. It's really like a thing with uh, with uh, with uh, Photoshop, uh, you know, um, Windows. Um, too much teasing. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Josh. <laughs> We will have to <laughs> imagine. <laughs> uh, do you have a texture department at, at uh, Chaos Masons? Well, I mean, every um, just curious. Yeah. Um, well, no, it's it's characters. You have to do like the entire character. That's how we work. This is how we do it. I find that, I don't know if you would agree with me, but I find that um, companies that have, or industries that actually like have like positions of, um, positions of, uh, of um, texture artists is more like stuff like, um, like the movie industry, because like, in the movie industry, it's like so important to actually like have um, like textures are so like particular in the movie industry. 
as far as I like understand things, uh, it's like a craft by itself. Uh. Hey, thanks for the follow. Can you explain your synthetic muscle process? Uh, um, it's funny, people are always asking me this question. If you look at my videos, you'll see there's one of my videos that I actually go through and explain it. It's one of the first videos, as far as I can remember, from this uh, series. And I go through the process, so uh, I'll refer to this. Uh, yeah, movie works like that. Yeah, Miguel, it's Z, yeah. Um, if you do modeling, you basically only do modeling and UVs. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's uh, that's what I thought. Um, at Chaos Missions, there's like something really important for us is that um, the uh, the artists feel like they're um, like that they get to work on like on a full character because I know that like like me personally, I get a lot of pride for like having like created like my my character by myself right so uh the way we actually like separate things we try to make sure that like people get to work on on their character so that like they have like they can prou uh, proudly present it in their portfolio afterwards um sometimes it happens that we actually share work uh, some circumstances actually require us to do it that way but uh, most of the time we try to make sure that like uh like we, we 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 let people work on their own uh, characters from uh, high res to blocking to um, to whatever is coming next. I think it's I think it's a number two, not positive. Well, I mean it could be, it could be. It sounds about right. On Mantis series, yep, on the Mantis series. Hey stream, hey Rionin. Um, yeah, okay, it made me, it made me think about something, that last question made me think about something. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this is a public announcement to my 43 viewers at the moment. Um... If you know anyone that do uh, rigging and skinning, that like freelance in a in a freelance fashion, do rigging rigging and skinning, um, please let me know because we are in the process of uh, providing other services within the company and uh we want we might want to create a uh skinning and rigging department and for that we need to i find and hire somebody that we can trust that is smart and knowledgeable in their craft so if ever you know someone? Let me know. And God knows that those people are very rare. I'm, I try to get rid of like stars when they're like too close to the border. I don't mind stars in the middle of the, uh, oops, in the middle of uh, the shape, but uh, stars like right on the edge just creates a, like weird artifacts when you create the thickness and everything that's probably going to be good enough for uh oops thanks for the follow slipgate central vedzim hi nice to see you here I 
I'm happy to see that you connected. We just talked earlier today and you were asking when's my schedule? So good timing. It's tonight. Tonight is the night. Getting close to the end of this character as well, working on the head right now. The most important piece, but still the last one. And for some weird reason, sometimes I like to start my character with the feet, which is what I did for this one. So we're finishing with the important part, which is great. I am tired. I am sick of looking at this character, but now I'm working on the important part. Very smart. Very smart. <laughs> All right. Uh, first time chatter. Taras, he's yours. I can't keep up with the live streams, but I'm watching it on YouTube. Your work is inspiring. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Rionan, whoa, I would love to, such a job, but I'm afraid that I have not enough knowledge for that. I don't have the knowledge, the knowledge, knowledge either, so hey, tough luck for us. Hey, have you seen Substance 3D Modeler or maybe talked to someone who used it? I actually have no idea. I've seen nothing. I haven't heard of it either, but I am very curious because God knows that um, uh, Algorithmic, well, now Adobe, um, did some pretty insane stuff with their software. So could be interesting. Could be interesting. I mean, it would have to be really good to make me change from uh, from software from a ZBrush to this, but I mean, if it's good, it's good. I'm just like I have like this love story that's uh, been happening with ZBrush for a long time now. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it would need to be like game changer. Like for example, like for me, um, what's this other software? Um, 3D coat, like, was actually not enough for me to, uh, to change. Uh, made some rigging, but uh, I'm far away from the quality. What are you looking for, I think? Yeah, we're actually really looking for, like, people that that's their, like, their main thing, right? Uh, I think that, like, uh, like, riggers, like, like really, 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 really good riggers are probably like people that I dedicated their like life and knowledge to the study of that. It's a very uh, not an easy job, let's say. You want to rig for my models? No, actually, I want to rig for uh, my company, not my uh, really just my models, but really for uh, like we're trying to create a rigging department. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Critical is done for. Oh yeah, I haven't uh, kept. Um, I haven't kept the news, so uh, I would know about that. But I, I trust your, uh, your, uh, your judgment on this. Good thing I didn't uh, convert. Then I guess, I guess. Um, yeah, voxel stuff, man. Um, I, I hope that. It's going to be like a standard, like in uh, in not too too long, because like you can do some pretty cool stuff with voxel when it really really works, um, like organically and fine. The other thing that like really interests me that I'm like really wondering if it's um that I'm not that I'm wondering if it's anything, but um. I just had a brain fart, but the other, yeah, the other software I'm, or uh, technology, I'm really like, uh, like, I wanting to jump into it, but I just don't have enough time. Is um, like any type of like VR sculpting, like I have, I have an Oculus, like first generation, and uh, oh boy, I've been having a lot of fun with that thing uh, before I had my kid. Um, now with a kid, it's kind of like, uh, like hard. Like I had to make like some choices in my life, of, like what I wanted to pursue. Like I want to learn how to paint. I want to continue doing my, my 3D art projects. I need to take care of my company. I want to be there for my, for my family. Like there's, 
I want to play Elden Rings. <laughs> so like, there's a couple of things that like you need to I need to choose. But like, man, I would have loved to jump in VR. Ah, oh, that would have been so great. That would have been so great. Um, like I said on on another on another stream, there's a few things that I hope that they're going to fix with VR because like there's some stuff I find just like not really slick or anything. But it's um, it looks pretty cool. It looks really fucking cool. Um, yeah, no, uh, doing VR when you have a kid, like it's like you put like the mask on your head, and the moment that I do some activities, like my kid wants to like like jump with me and like have fun like my wife can't do yoga in the in the living room if the kid's there because like the kid is like going to be worse than like a dog trying to do like all the poses and everything it's cute to see but like <laughs> it's it's hard to do anything so if i just have like those like goggles and start to like shake around and i don't see what i'm doing i'm gonna smack my kid by accident um for sure and then I'm going to have like child services knocking at my door right away. So uh, no VR while the baby is there. I'm actually building a, an extension. Not an extension, but um, I have like a... I don't have a basement at the moment, but I'm working on having a basement. Right now it's more like a crawl space, but I want to build a basement out of it. And uh, while I'm gonna, when I'm gonna have the basement, I can maybe like install like a, a little like video game room down there, and maybe I'll be able to have like the the uh, have the VR there and whatnot. No, I miss uh, the parties where we like we just like play uh, Beat Saber and uh, all that fun stuff on the VR. Oh yeah, I need to put back the the head of uh, the wasp as a reference. Just realizing that, like, there, inspire me, wasp. Uh, yeah, Substance Modeler will have the VR support. Yeah, that's cool. And it will look like a professional software rather than a cool toy like medium. Yeah, I, I, I feel the same. I feel like that medium was kind of like more like a toy or like an experiment or something. There was like Kudon or Kudo, something like that also that I tried, which was like a little bit closer to something I need. But like if um, Substance have like the VR thing, thanks for the, the follow. If uh, Substance had the VR thing and really professional, I think it could actually um, offer something better than medium, which is fine. Medium's fine, but I agree with you that it kind of feels like a toy. Um, you know what? Let me know. Let me know about that. I would be very curious if you test it. Let me know how you feel about it. Do you know if um, the new VR um, software are going to require like the newest um, like VR headsets and whatnot? Or I'm just wondering like how how um, obsolete my my Oculus first generation is going to be in the uh, in the next uh, the next few years.
that's good. That's good to know. Because um, I know those like technology are gonna like move pretty fast, right? Uh, I feel like, uh, hmm. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go and get the uh, the mouth stuff right away. All right. Iteration number twenty nine. Face. What company are the quests? Like that's how informed I am. <laughs> Oculus as well. Okay. Okay. Hey, um, for those who tried the VR, what's your, um, send me a couple of, uh, titles of like your favorite games that you played on the VR. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, mine, uh, of course, um, like games like Beat Saber were like super rad. Um, I loved also, uh, well, Half-Life of course was, was great. It was a great game. Um... Robo Recall was absolutely awesome. For sure, no doubt. Man, Robo Recall was so good. Oh my god, man. Even just like the introduction game in on the Oculus was great as well. Alan Barnett. Newer headsets will have some better feature, but the original Oculus will be fine for years to come. I still use mine for development. That's good. That's very good to know. Thanks for uh, thanks for reassuring me because that thing was not cheap. No cheapo, especially that you have to like buy like all the like you have to have like the computer that comes with it. Like at some point, it's like, give me a break, dude. <laughs> Hey, thanks for the follow. Resident, oh, Resident Evil 7, go fuck yourself. I'm never going to play that game with the Oculus. I had such a hard time just playing it on the the, the PC or the, the PlayStation, wherever I played it. I just cannot imagine playing Resident Evil 7 on the VR. Gorn. That's funny, Gorn. All right, I'll have to check that. I don't know that one. Uh, Lone Echo, so far, number one in my chart. All right. I'll, you know what? I'm going to have to note everything you guys are saying. Lone Echo, Gorn. Oh, yes, motion control. Execution. An amazing game. Also multiplayer, similar to Ender's Game Zero G. Oh, you know what? Ender's Game Zero G. Um, I seen it. I, I think I, maybe I played it a little bit. Uh, that looks rad, man. I love... Um, it's a, it's a it's a piloting game, right? Am I right? Like in space and everything, like like three three sixty orbital kind of like control and stuff. Actually, it's funny because we're talk. I'm talking about the. Uh, Oculus games right now, and what I'm listening to right now is the soundtrack of Beat Saber. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of like uh, 
it's uh, topical. Oh, it's an FPS. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll I'll still I'll still look at it. Good. Okay. Nice. 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 Um. Yeah. I tried to play Subnautica. I heard it was like really a great game. It was impossible for me to play Subnautica. It was like exactly the kind of game that like makes me want to puke. Um, and uh, and I I I I didn't have this um, this uh, feeling with uh, much games actually. Um, as long as I don't like use like tank control when I play VR, you know, really I'm good. So when I I play games where you, like you move, I try to use the teleport move. I'm still good with like the tri uh, like normal move. Like I played Pavlov a little bit, and it was it was okay. But uh, Subnautica for me was like oh my god, like puke inducing, and it it's sad because it did look like a good game. Unfortunately. Dual jaw like predator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna save a layer on that and I'm gonna try to just uh, assemble the, uh, the pieces to have somewhat of like the shape of the face that I have because uh, I do not dislike, I do not dislike that. Hey Vadim, by the way, your um your newest uh thing you showed uh, online that uh sci-fi chick with the um with the the Japanese uh demon theatrical mask thing uh super rad dude super rad Uh, yeah, I didn't get some other kind of VR, probably not implemented well, but yeah, it's gorgeous. Still got a beat sequel if they're finished working on it. Yep. yep. Uh, what's your CPU and memory? ZBrush looks way too quick. I don't have that performance. <laughs> I, I don't know. I know. I, I, maybe I'll have to check. Uh, thanks. Keep working on her. That's cool, man. I'll, I'll keep watching. Um... Yeah, people have been asking me about my computer a lot. Um, I guess that I can probably try to find the information. All right, there we go. That's my specs. I don't know if uh, they're all visible. Memory. Something like that. I don't know if that's all the information uh, we'd need, but uh, just to give an idea. Like it's a, it's a good machine. It's not like I, it's, it wasn't made like custom, like from parts. Uh, 
maybe put the info on their stream subscription later. Oh yeah, you think of people uh Yeah, you might be right, hey. I could maybe um add it. Do you think like in the I should add it like in the video playing or like in the description of my channel? 128 gigs of RAM. Uh I don't know, maybe. Uh, it seems so. Something like that. I mean, ZBrush doesn't use really much RAM. Oh, no, it does. It does. Well, is it that much? I don't know. I think it does like to have like a lot of like, like tools open at the same time, which I actually like don't really do that anyway. Like really what I think that I need the most is a CPU because that's really the thing that, uh, really the thing that uh, ZBrush uses the most and ZBrush is really the thing I'm using the most as a software When you get a chance, would love to hear some thoughts on how to know when your design isn't shit. <laughs> uh, regardless how much I or colleagues might like a form shape detail, I've always got this feeling that someone somewhere would have a tangible reason for why it's bad. Any tips on trusting your intuition, I suppose? That is such a complex question. Uh, thanks for the follow. That is a super hard question to answer. Um, how can I answer this? I mean, I can try to answer in regards to my personal journey. Um, okay, first of all, that goes without saying that like I have um, imposter syndrome and all of the nice artistic uh, emotional... Uh, <laughs> difficulties if i can call them that so like just base level so you know like like oh thanks for the follow life is not like an easy ride emotionally uh for me um god knows that uh artists like to torture themselves and stuff <laughs> <laughs> but um the um like w one thing that i did a lot is well i mean i've i i although i was never really like a good drawer um well, i mean good at drawing i mean uh although i've never really been good at drawing like i've always like drew when i was a kid so um and I found that the the positive thing that it um, brought me to do so much uh, drawing was that it kind of like um, practiced me to just go through the motions of um, of creating without necessarily like giving me like an obligation to change the world and find the newest designs and this and that and really just go through like go through the process basically um and i think that like i've been through that process so long and i've been critical about my heart my art for so long and i've also at the same time studied other people's art for so long that at this point I really just follow my intuition actually I have a couple of like rules that I follow when I design um, but they're really like 
like design rules. Like I try to like have hierarchy, like have a mix of like big shapes, small shapes, basically like uh, detail distribution. I try to actually have like areas that breathe areas that are more complex. Like there's a lot of like tutorials online that show like design principles like this that I, I apply. But in terms of really like understanding like the creation of a design and making it look good, um, in the end, the best answer I've the best answer I've ever found was um, to really just listen to your gut or your intuitions, your instinct. Um, I mean, if your instinct tells you it sucks, um, maybe it does a bit, but then the next step is not to, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for the follow. Uh, the next step is just to, uh, look at it again, study it, start over. And, uh, one tip that I heard once that I was like, ah, oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Especially for like the learning period is, um, it was a tip by, uh, Ian McKay, something like that, I think. And, uh, it was, um, you have to learn to murder your darlings. And what murder your darlings mean is, although you spent a lot of time on something and you are emotionally attached to it, maybe you think that like you did the best that you ever did in your life and you will not be able to accomplish that again. Well, that thing that you're, you can't hold on to that thing. You need to, um, if your intuition tells you like, maybe it's not good or whatever, you need to be ready to, uh, move on and try again. Hey, that's a raid. That is a raid. Oh my God. 93 Bly Club. Thank you. Thank you for this raid. It is appreciated. Maybe, maybe you could share us, uh, your channel and everything. Hmm? That could be cool. Hey. Right. Thanks for the comment. I really appreciate this. I appreciate the comment. I appreciate the raid. I appreciate so many things right now. Thank you so much. You are part of this, of the, the foundation of the creation of this channel now. And thanks for the follow. So yeah, that would be my tip. I'm just going to jump to the re next question because I'm seeing that like the chat is going to go through everything. <laughs> uh, awesome machine in Brazil, a machine like this, same price of a car. <laughs> oh, the machine, you mean my computer. Okay. <laughs> thought you meant uh, the character I'm working on. I was like, you can buy that in Brazil? Holy shit. Western Yard ZBrush is pretty forgiving if you don't try to work with models above 4 million. Um, well, I mean, I would say subtools above 4 million, maybe. At least for, yeah, for the machine I have, I guess. Um, maybe you keep all your meshes in sub D and that keeps the viewport performance. Yes, I do. All like. Like everything you see has been sub -deed. at some point when I'm in, uh, like I see this is like in DynaMesh because this was my blocking, but eventually I will be splitting all my meshes like I did with this one, transforming it into topology. Uh, you're just using ZRE mesh and um, panel looping just so it actually goes faster. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, of course, when it's DynaMesh, it becomes really slow faster for sure. Um, yep, like Ryunin says. Uh, yeah, it does. It's it's kind of like encumbering sometimes to have the sub D, but I kind of like integrated it so well into my um to my workflow that it, it um I'm kind of like at peace now with um with uh, what it gives me, what it takes away, that sort of stuff. It's really it. Thing of preference at the end, I guess. Yeah. Uh, making against something, I have more than one piece on separate up check. At some point, it really gets slow. I don't have sub divs, so it's mandatory to have nice retail point of time to continue. Yeah, yep. Um, all right, by Eb. Love your work, man. Cool to see your process here. Hey, it's my pleasure. Come here as much as you want. Yeah, 93 Black Club. Thanks again for that. That was cool. 
uh, tracks. Uh, yeah. uh, what artists are you inspired by, or are you reference? Are your references? It's um, it's really hard to say. There's like so many. There is so so many. Um, Cedric Seo has been inspiring me a lot since the beginning. I mean, I have a company with him now, so it's kind of like a cheap answer. But uh, it's true that um, Cedric was uh, is still inspiring. Like the way his brain work and his designs, too, it's it's fabulous. I just love what he what he does. Um, Furio Tedeschi was actually a really important uh, person for me as well. Really important artist. Uh, I was following his stuff, and then he moved to Montreal, and we became friends. And um, it was a it was a good time. I really appreciated that. Um, in another that uh, needs to be mentioned, I guess, is um, Mike Nash. Uh, God bless his soul, Mike Nash. Uh, I really loved uh, what he did. It was, it was really, really fucking great. Uh, especially in terms of um, of uh, visual language, I'd say, uh, that I loved. I really liked. And... Um, I mean, there's like so many people, like all the greats, of course. Of course, they're inspiring. Vitaly Raphael, Alex, Senecal. Like the popular names, right? But um, like there's so many people. That, I mean, it's hard to just think about it. Plus, like there's like all those people in concepts. Ugh, it's hard. I mean, I could just go through like such a like exhaustive list plus i mean like there's so many people that are not like household names that do like incredible things right so it's kind of like i find in a sense it's kind of like unfair that i just end up saying like the big names because god knows that like there are so many people that merit to have their names mentioned as well and fame builds so exponentially and I feel that like a lot of like very good artists, they just get like left in the dust, and um, and I, I, yeah, and uh, it, it, on a sense it's unfortunate. On the other sense, I mean it's just like how things work, right? So why get mad at like like a phenomenon, right? It's just it's going to happen this way. Uh, but it, it, but at least if you ask me this question, I can talk about that right and say that um although i'm kind of like not helping the issue by not having any names to mention um so many people yeah deserve like praise and such I have, i'll have to think about uh, think about it I find that beginners use way too many polygons. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really like using too much polygons. Thanks for taking the time to share your thoughts. That's what I needed to hear today. Oh, well, that's cool, Alan. I'm happy that I was able to answer that. Andrew, yes. Oh, Brian, some, I actually worked with Brian. Uh, super cool guy, man. He's such a nice guy. And I fucking love his stuff. I actually have three... Um, like my house is like, I have like posters everywhere of, uh, artists. Like you can see it's like that all around the, all around my, my office. And I have like three images of Brian Sum right there on top. So, uh, yeah, no, he's awesome. Uh, give me a sec, I have to check something.
Hey, um, uh, Vadim, um, didn't like there was like this like art, like this character that I saw like years ago, years ago, um, of like this kind of like battle battle angel chick in like a mech armor with like this little like bug thing following her. I'm not mistaking that it was you that made that piece, right? Dominance War 1, remember that. Yeah, dude. Was it that? <laughs> yeah, Cedric really had this vision of the future, for sure. Yeah, I remember talking to him, and he was like, man, we need to start doing that, because uh, I think it's going to pick up. No, uh, he was not wrong. I'm in War 4. Yeah, that was me. So, uh, yeah, dude, um, that uh, that piece um, was a huge, huge inspiration for me. So, um, um, Alan asked me about, like, inspirations and stuff like that. And like I said, there was, like, many things that inspired me. Well, I have to say, dude, that this uh, piece uh, was an important part in my inspiration. So... Thank you for that. It is much appreciated. 2008. Dude. Incredible. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Cedric also did like that big, uh, that big bulky dude. That's before I also met Cedric. That's kind of like, actually, I saw that character right before I met uh, Cedric. All right, let's start to add those like grid details around here. I'm really freestyling the um, the design on the face right now because like normally I would have probably like start to like draw a little bit more on my shape to figure out exactly what I'm going to do but like uh, I'm kind of like going um, freehand a little bit with the polish here yeah yeah I, I get what you mean and uh, I find that this circle of inspiration is, is such like an, an important piece of um, of our um, of our uh, industry as as artists like things come around go around the 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 change the merge they split and and um like nothing comes out of a vacuum but that's the beauty of it and it's just like to see like this dance of like inspiration going around and sometimes you just fall on like a combination of things it's just like oh right that's the that's like a cool thing right it's like cooking i mean it's like all the spices already exist and uh that, that, that all the meat already exists and the vegetable already exists, but sometimes you just have like a combination that's just like, oh yeah, that one, that one. And then you go back to that restaurant over and over because you just like, you just know what you want now. Okay, am I going to go for a... Uh... Let me check maybe in the mm. It's an old file. Did I save it in ZPR? Let's try. Yeah, that question that question is still on my mind. The thing that inspired me because I'm I'm really bummed out that I just said like 
big names and stuff it, it's it really doesn't represent the reality of like what inspires me i just i'm so so fucking bad with names I wish I was able to to say much more than this. Am I going to have enough? I guess I'm going to need to load this uh, the other guy again. Uh, damage big boots. Yeah, it's on the top of my head, but uh Like I feel like I should like know a bit. No? Like I'm just looking at the uh, the images that I have and it's like even like <laughs> there's so many images that I have and I'm like oh, I don't remember the name of that guy. I just loves what he does. Yeah. I'm trying to like get something to scavenge from <laughs> from the other uh from the other insectoids. Alright, let's try let's try this thing here. Scale might be a little bit off between the these latest characters, so oops, whoops, whoops, whoops. Gotta go. It was nice to, talking to you. I went to do a three-day streaming marathon Friday to Sunday, just working on that Ninja Chick until High Poly's gone. Wow, you're going to put yourself through the gauntlet, my man. Um, well, you know what? I encourage you to do that. That would be sweet. And if I have the opportunity, I will be joining that stream to see the endurance run of finishing that character. So I wish you good luck until then. And I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you soon. Have a good one, Vadim. First keeper, hi, Blender. Thanks for the follow. Later, Vadim. Good luck, and everybody here, go check his channel and support him during his marathon. Let it not be in vain. Canadians fan? You mean like the hockey team? <laughs> or just Canadian the the country? Uh yeah, of course. I'm I'm Quebecer, so I I I, I have to be a Canadian fan. <laughs> I actually I don't listen to um to hockey uh, that much uh since I have to make choices in my life. And I cannot listen too much to hockey, but I am down for hockey night anytime. Anytime that there is, like I have like a, I have this friend who uh, comes to the house sometimes and uh, every time it's always the same. Hockey night. 
same way that I have this these this ritual with my other friends where Saturday it's UFC and that sort of stuff. This is the this is our jam, but um, just alone by myself, left to my own volition. Uh, yeah, I kind of like uh, stick with like my little routine, so I I, uh, I know about what's happening with the Canadians uh, more like in uh, um, in uh, after the fact. Let's say it's part of their religion. Yeah. <laughs> Canadians are a decent neighbor, I guess. Eh, we're not bad. We don't make too much noise. It's, it's good to have a neighbor that doesn't make too much noise. I'm actually, actually, I have my, my neighbors from uh, beside um, came to thank me recently to, to let them, let them, uh, to let me know that I was, uh, I was very nice with, uh, not making too much uh too much noise and i really like try my best to to be like the best neighbor that i can be how canadian of me eh canadian eh a cubed thanks for joining Thank you for joining. It's party time. All right. So you see like now I've I added those meshes in this area here and clearly I'm going to need like a binding agent between them. So um uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, use this shape or, or maybe like I should be using another one because it's starting to be actually you know what I'll simply separate the orange piece into another um, tool because I like to have like normally like I try to have like all my main pieces there and then I'll have like a shape inside of the, the model that's going to be used as the binding agent. If like two things are not really meshing well together, I'll kind of like create a, tra a transition with it. But for that, I just mean, need to have a few or more uh, separated uh, pieces for her. And soon I'll be able to place like the eyes as well. And so, like, yeah. But, uh, for the moment, let's just... Uh, Grab this piece here. Come on. Don't be shy. Jesus Christ. I'm trying to mask by color, but okay. Oh, no. There we go. Bad on neck. All right. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Hey, thanks for the follow. All right. I've got this here. This will act as my piece. I'll take this. This piece here, push it inside. There we go. So now I can actually like start using this as the binding agent. I still don't know like that black part here. I might want to make like cloth out of that. I've kind of like been using cloth a little bit on this character. Or will it be just like metal? 
I guess I'm going to try to treat it as metal. It's going to be a bit nowhere for a cloth piece. Hey, thanks for the follow. Oh, Miss Coco, hello. Gate, do you work at Wildlife? Uh, I will answer for him because I think he left the stream. And uh, yes, it's uh, the Slipgate that works at Wildlife. You admire my patience with so many parts? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Ashley, lovely to see you here. I also like your stream. Uh, yes, a lot of love going around this stream. First keeper, you left wildlife. Well, there you go. Hey, people know their stuff. I'm just here for the entertainment and not the information. <laughs> uh, bye, bye, bye. I might be the most uninformed person on the planet by the way so bear with me <laughs> well you know what uh thank you ashley for being uh candid with me you are certainly making me feel better about myself and that is very much appreciated any kind of support is good support <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know what, um, Verse Keeper, that is kind of a good reason for that. And uh, you do well. You do well, my friend. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. <laughs> All right, I guess we have a little party over here, eh? I, you know what I actually noticed since I started this stream? Um, it's been practicing a part of my muscle. Uh, well, sorry, a part of my, my brain that um, I haven't really practiced before. It's to kind of like juggle talking and working at the same time uh, because like uh, although I'm a very uh, I'm a social social person I love to I love going out I like to talk I love to exchange with people uh, like I like to be out public that sort of stuff um, when I'm working I'm uh, I'm very um, reserved like when I was working in studios, I actually at some point like almost had to have like a little flag beside my desk. And when the flag was raised, basically it meant like, do not talk to me. Like I need to be like in my bubble or whatever. And um, uh, it was kind of like something that was holding me back to start uh, streaming. Because it was like, oh, well, I mean, I'm not going to be really able to concentrate and whatever. And... Uh, Although, although there is actually like, um, like a certain, um, truth to that, like I'm probably working close to twice as slow because I'm, I'm talking and I'm, I'm not, I like hyper-focused on my work, right? Uh, but man, I'm having a good time. And I actually am doing much better than when I was started a few weeks ago. 
uh, with uh, talking and working at the same time. It's it it at some point at some point. I mean, maybe this isn't going to be an analogy only for for musicians, but like it kind of like feels like playing drums sometimes, or playing piano, where like you have to actually have like two things working at the same time, two things or more working at the same time that are kind of like asynchronous. Um, it's a very it's a cool. It, it's fun with the brain what it does when you actually can do both like that. I'm not doing that. I'm a master. I'm not saying I'm a master at it at all. I'm just saying I've experienced like a, a change and uh, I appreciate it. It's uh it's super fun. So, uh, so yeah, no, I like it. I like it. All right. Bar Marco. It's been late. Thanks. No problem. Acta 79. I will see you soon. I hope. Uh, I don't like to stream when I'm designing and doing other complex stuff, cleaning, retopo, etc. is boring and getting better with company. Uh, I absolutely agree with that. Um, and a lot of people are telling me like, hey, you should probably like stream when you're doing like really more design stuff. Uh, like right now what I'm doing on the head, since it's a, a bit really blocky, I feel there's like a bit of designing in that at the same time. But like real pure design, I also like, I don't see really myself streaming it, but I know so many people want to see it. So like, I might give it a shot, but I can, I, I can, I can already like, kind of like tell that I won't be able to really use fully the part of my brain that I need to, to really perform at it and that sort of stuff. So I might try it, but maybe it's going to be like wasted time or like, I don't know. We'll see. But I, I, I really, really vibe with what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah you're good at juggling though it makes you extra tired after a stream is done but you're awesome <laughs> thanks i appreciate that uh, that's really sweet of you to say that um i it does drain me completely it's absolutely draining for sure uh but uh i'll tell you i sleep well after that i do <laughs> Yeah, it was um Cedric is working right now on a um an actual tutorial. Um because uh, we're trying to uh like Cedric is more into like making tutorial than doing streams and uh me I just like hate doing tutorials because of all the editing and that sort of stuff or whatever. And um I'm actually kind of um happy that we can share like uh like two different venues, right? Because, uh, I mean, it just makes for, like, more content to provide and that sort of stuff. And, um, where was I going with that? I actually had a point. So Drake's working on something. Tutorial. Man. Damn, I actually lost my train of thought right there. Oh, it's going to come back to me. Um, any chance to see more teasing images of your night model tomorrow? <laughs> uh, maybe not tomorrow, maybe next week. Uh, I'm trying to... Uh, I want to I, I want to tease more. I love to tease. But uh, I just want to get like, give like some time to... Uh, yeah, I just want to give some, some time to pass. Maybe next week. Maybe I'll show like uh, like some other like parts of it. Uh, but yeah, like I said, at some point I'm actually might work on the uh, full character, or actually one of the next character. It's going to be a series of uh, three characters, and uh, I'm already working on the second one. I'm like a little less than half done, and uh, I'm going to. Uh, yeah, we're going to see what it's going to, to give, but uh, I have authorization from my collaborator in this project to share this, so so that's good. 
or and I'm thinking of like working maybe on like two things at the same time because like on one hand I want to start working on the uh, uh, the Archangels project, the thing you call uh, the night. And uh, on the other hand, I actually want to um, uh, work on that uh, Chrono Trigger meets Elden Ring mashup that I was talking about. To be honest, like where I am with the the with this idea is like I'm I'm really not far. I just know I want to do, like, I still have to like inspire myself from the type of like art design for the armors that like um, Elden Ring has. It's like mix of um, like Oriental and um, like Viking esque and medieval thing that they have in the game. Very inspiring stuff. I really like it. What well, what one thing I'll say, and it's 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 absolutely not like a critique or it's more like an observation, but uh, man, man, uh, Miyamoto really loves to mix genres in the same un like universe, and uh, which is kind of like cool. And at some point, sometimes it gets like very like like different to a point that it's like wow like it's it feels almost like a dream where like things don't necessarily make sense um i like the vibe of it for sure but uh i know some people are saying like that one thing that they don't like about the art design of uh the games are is that sometimes things become like a little bit too like eclectic um I like it though. I can't say that I don't like it, but it just it it just makes. I think it it kind of like contributes to making that world so surreal, actually, which is like a good quality for the game. The surrealness of it. I see how like some people want to have something that is more like grounded and constant. Like if I think about, for example, like the, the God of War games are very grounded, actually. Like everything really, truly feels like it's part of this one world that like it that's not part like a, of a multiverse of like culture mashed up in time. I guess there's a little bit for everyone, right? Eh? Um... When I was streaming on Real Studies, though, people were very helpful. Got a lot of suggestions and tutorials to check. That's another positive side of streaming. Absolutely right. And um, I like that. This whole aspect of sharing is something that's very, um, that, uh, very spe that speaks to me a lot. So uh, I do share this opinion as well. The Dream Team, all right. I'm out to Elden Ring calls, super stuck. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Ashley, if you're still there, uh, I wish you good night. Uh, thanks for coming by. That's much appreciated. And I, I wish you a good uh, um, quest f to become the Elden Lord. So good luck. Godspeed to you. <laughs> So you see like this like brown uh, brown this uh, like dark area here I'm actually going to keep it as like a binding agent thing thanks for the follow and this looks sick thanks man much appreciated man or woman I'm very uh, very old school with my expressions dude man and such I call my my call my wife dude constantly. That's such a bad reflex that I have. I just can't I just can't get over it. I just love that word too much. 
Some people bro, some people dude. I'm a bro that dudes. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. It's a slip of the tongue. You get me. You get me, Josh. Dude works, dude. You know what I heard? I don't know if that's true, but I heard that a dude was actually um, like hemorrhoids. The hemorrhoids of donkeys were called dudes. Something like that. I don't know if that's true. Don't quote me on that. Maybe I'm just per I'm just continuing the, <laughs> the lie. <laughs> I don't know. I just heard that. <laughs> Way to go, dude. <laughs> uh, thanks for the follow, dude. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I'm starting to have a realization. I might need to re to rename that uh, stream channel something, dude. Treaty dude, dude sculpt, dude something, dude, dude soiree. <laughs> so stupid, dude soiree. Oh my god, that's good though. Dude soiree. It doesn't have to do with 2D anymore. I just love it. Dude Swally. Wow, that's so stupid. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I'll come back on that black piece here uh, later because, like, it's really going to act as a binding agent, and I should really be focusing on like those pieces here. I've been like doodling around a little bit too much. I should commit to a bit of like the pieces that I have right now and try to make it work. All right, let's save this. Oh, this is for um, this is just for fun. It's uh, simply continuing my uh, insectoid series that I'm working on right now. Just for fun, just having fun here. I might actually work on um, like I said earlier. Um, I might work on another project soon during the streams, and uh, this project might be more like a something serious, whereas this one is really just for. Uh, for the heck of it. I'm actually used to working with clients that um, the commission that they give me to do would never, ever, ever permit to show the things I'm working on, we're working, like, when we're working professionally, like, we're always working with, like, super strict NDAs, that sort of stuff. 
I guess if you're working for like a personal commission, you could actually like tell the per the person like, hey, you know what? I work for your your thing as long as I can stream it. Yeah, well, what sucks about that is when you actually work on like a f like fucking awesome game and you just want to talk about it and you can, so you're just like, uh. <laughs> all right, I'll keep that for myself. All right, I'll keep this piece round. I'll have. Do I? Am I going to keep a a change of plane here? I don't know. Last year of my work is pretty much never going to see the light. How come you say that? It's got it got canceled. Ah, because NDA. Oh, you mean that there you're like white labeling? Like as in like uh like you're working and it's like you already know that like they're never going to let you uh show the work or talk about the fact that you worked on it. Disney NDA was fifty pages ah fuck Disney with their NDAs. I just I'm sure it's like unbearable. The Overwatch 2 stuff. I don't know when. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about that. There's this um, dream project that when I started working for ADOS Montreal, um, Actually, a little bit of history for people who don't uh, really know um, where I come from and stuff. Um, my first job was at THQ in Montreal. Uh, THQ closed at some point, and before it closed, I kind of like jump shipped and I went to go work for uh, another company. I went to go work for BioWare, and um, uh, actually, that's it's it's exactly when uh, Raphael Grasetzi left BioWare. I joined and took his place on the uh, Mass Effect team and um, so uh, I came this close to meet him in Montreal but uh, eh, alas and um, the uh, I had to meet him and I met him in Los Angeles afterwards uh, but uh, would have been fun at that time to uh, to meet the whole team with uh, Herbert and Rodrigue and uh, the rest of the gang was a pretty uh pretty good dream team right there so anyways uh i joined uh bioware it was a really great time uh and uh at some point um cedric joined uh ados and uh there was this like dream project happening at at, at, at ados and although i had a lot of fun working on uh, the um working on the, uh, the, the the last DLC for Mass Effect 3 and uh, working on the pre-production of uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Although that was fun, um, this other project felt like something unique that I could not... Uh, that I could not... Um, I could not like say no to it. I had to try it. And uh, it was... People at people at uh, Bioware didn't really like it because I didn't stay there, there for long, and then I jumped ship and stuff. And um, they called me Judas for two years, probably. <laughs> I guess I deserved it. <laughs> um, still have a good relationship with those guys. Uh, they're 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 good friends of mine. I appreciate them. Um, but yeah, no, I actually went to work uh, at ADOS on a secret project that will never see the light of day because it got cancelled like 
three, four months after I joined ADOS. It was such an awesome project. It was, it would have been an incredible thing. And uh, it was so sad. Everybody that I worked with on this project, um, we all remember this project really fondly. Uh, I was with Cedric, that was the other 3D artist. Um, there were other few uh, concept artists as well that were really talented. Nicolas Francoeur, Nivan Chantara, Johan Chepaz, um, Leonid. I forgot his last name. Damn, Leonid. And um, man, we were having fun. It was a really, really, really good time. Uh, but the project will never see the light of day, and that's super sad. The only um, redeemable thing is that when I saw um, Guardians of the Galaxy come out by, uh, by Ados Montreal, I recognized a lot of the inspirations that we had on this project and those inspir inspiration um, stayed alive in like the minds of the artists that worked on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy later. And it, it was uh, really cool, really fucking cool to see that um, this like art direction or intention like survived and made it through. Also, I'll uh, I'll plug a uh, I'll plug a um, uh, a, pr a a company here. Um, so th this company called uh, Rogue Factor is a company in Montreal, and uh, they came out with a game called Necromunda, but. Um, they're uh, they're coming out with another game soon enough, I guess, uh, which um, some of my friends uh, worked on this uh, project, and uh, it looks extremely promising. There's some people from Ados that now work there, people that I knew, and uh, I can't wait to see what they're going to do. Yep. So stay tuned for that. That Eidos project, I still hear about it every time we got work. <laughs> Miguel, it never leaves. Still this day from former members of this team. Yeah. Thanks for the plug. Hey, fait plaisir. <laughs> Yeah, every time I, t I meet Nico, we always have to talk about that for a minute or two, and then we get sad, and then we change subject. <laughs> it was the same with Yoan. But it's funny, I, I see like how this project shaped like a lot of like inspirations for Yoan as well. Or like vice versa, I mean like Yoan put of himself like in the project as well. Same with Nico. I want to work with you. Your work is so awesome. Well, Marmax, that uh, is a very nice compliment. I really appreciate it. And for anybody that wants to work uh, with us, it's really simple. You just have to send your portfolio to um, to us. You just go on the link in the bottom here, in the Chaos Mason links. You go in our website, and in our website, there's a contact form where you can send your portfolio. And we'll take a look at it. And uh, if uh, we find that your uh, style and skills are appropriate for our projects, well, we'll uh, we'll call you. We keep every portfolios and we take them uh, in serious consideration. So, uh, yeah, like this is serious. We 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 really keep. Uh, really keep everything and when we have like needs and stuff we always go back to our database
No problemo. All right, I'll take a second and just change the music. What are we listening to now? Oh, uh, I think I'm going to go for Primus. Okay, a little bit of Primus never hurts. All right, why did you end up running an outsourcing company? Was it like a next step or burnout? <laughs> All right, so, um, so when I actually uh, moved from uh, BioWare to go back to um, to go to uh, sorry not to go back but to go to uh, ADOS, um, I actually um, sorry. So yeah, I actually um, um, I was super bummed out when that project got canceled. Like I said. Um, like at some, at, at, I was really like, oh my God, what the fuck did I do? Like I, I quit like, uh, like a great project with great people. I'm talking about, um, at, uh, Mass Effect or Mass Effect, right? With, uh, Brian Sum and Ben Lowe and all the team that I mentioned before. Um, and, um, yeah, it's, um, um, I was placed on, um, uh, do Sex Mankind Divided, where I met some other awesome people. Uh, but the project was uh, was ending. So it's like, okay, well, I was just like doing like, like side characters and stuff. They gave me one character to do that was incredibly cool. But I was going on vacation the week that they needed for it to start. And they gave it to fucking Fred Dao that fucking asshole i'm saying that because he's like one of my best friend um a piece of shit did that character instead of me oh my god and he did a good job as well uh, on it which frustrates me even more fucking hate that guy fred <laughs> the big arm guy no 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 that, that he already uh he already did it when i arrived it was the uh like um Colossal exoskeleton suit. Yeah. Fred Egg's a piece of shit. Fucking hate him. Actually, I love him. It's, like I said, one of my best friends. But I fucking hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So, um, uh, they placed me on that project. And it was nice. It was cool. Uh, but uh, it was finishing. And, um didn't get to do really much stuff on it. And then we, they placed our, they placed us on like another project, uh, but that never really like saw the, the light of day. And then another project that didn't see the light of day. And uh, at some point, um, I kind of like, 
like me and Cedric, because we were together at the time, um, we were working on the same project and, um, and yeah, the, um, we just like had so many projects that got canceled under us and it was like, it was really a bummer, but, uh, but in reality, um, but in reality, the, um, um, another reason that like made us uh, pursue that, uh, that, um, ven that venue was that, um, we kind of like saw outsourcing being something really important and we like since the beginning of our career we worked with outsourcing companies to make um to make um like to help us on in in our projects and stuff and it was always like fucking like not working out we had to always like redo the characters ourselves repolish everything and I don't mean like polish or calibrate a little bit before putting in the engine. I mean like we had to like start over like so many pieces and, and whatever. It was so hard. And like me and Cedric were like, dude, I don't think it would be that hard to create like an outsourcing studio that um, is well mentored by us. So we basically like decided to try ourselves at it. And I mean, um, me and Cedric were already teachers at this uh, school in France. Our friend in France actually like started the school and we, uh, every, every year we used to go there and, uh, teach, um, teach students there for like a ZBrush workshop. And, um, yeah, it was really fun. Um, and doing that made us realize that we were actually, um, good, uh, teachers, good mentors because we were able to, to teach the people and we saw some very like passionate people and everything. And, um, and yeah, so since like we already knew we could teach people and everything and we knew that like, like really good outsourcing studios were rare, like we just put one and one, one and two together, uh, one and two together, A and B together, whatever the expression is. We just saw like this opportunity to, um, to start a, uh, video game, uh, studios that would actually provide like deluxe, deluxe outsourcing quality. And, uh, so far working like a charm. First time viewer, love some people. Hey there, I have a question if possible. I see you are doing all of these super high detailed polygon models, uh, some even above 100 million polygons. Yes. Uh, how do you, how do you other bake such high poly, uh, uh, I'm gonna test all kinds of bake struggle. Well, I don't know, man. I mean, it's probably like a question of your rig, I guess, your, uh, your machine. Um, Probably like you have to split in parts, use uh U dims, I guess, maybe. Or just like split your character in different parts. Like upper body, lower body. Try to make it less heavy. You can also like just decimate your model. I mean like the baking uh, is, doesn't work that bad with uh with decimation. All right, let's start to split another uh, another piece here. Should I or should I just like start drawing, sculpting away on the binding agent over here? I should probably do that. By the way, like like all those like areas are still not like binded correctly. Like I'm pretty much just like wasting not wasting that's not the right word. But I'm uh, I'm spending a lot of time just like doodling around for fun. I'm not being like super serious right now. I'm just trying to actually feel like having fun tonight instead of being like super diligent with my work. Um, but uh, if I would have to get serious, I would probably uh, work on doing making that better, but I'm going to do that later though. 
I do uh, no problem for the story. It's um, it's uh, it's one that I like say often. So sometimes I just wonder if I'm like it's like a broken record or like boring people with the story. So, uh, but it's a story that for me is a uh, it's a fun one. I like to tell it. So thanks for listening. I actually have another cool story, cool reminiscing story I can tell. Um, so, like, before I started in Treaty, I was actually working for the government. I was, uh, well, actually, before, okay, let's, let's rewind even more than that. Um, uh, oh, thanks for the follow. Let me just take a sip. Yeah, so um, when I was um, studying, or actually when I was in high school, and um, maybe like fourth grade of high school, so I was like, uh, I don't know, like 15 years old, I guess. 16, 15, something like that. Basically, they were asking us, uh, like, what do you want to do later? Because since we were nearing the end of high school, and we needed to go like to our like and go get like our graduate degrees and stuff basically we had to um like know what we wanted to do already which is fucking stupid to had to, to ask a 14 15 years old like hey what do you want to do for the rest of your life it's like kids of that age they're not they don't have the necessary tools and maturity to know exactly what they need to do it's not like if you were able to experiment enough to to know what you want yet but eh, whatever society requires us to know so that's what's happening and um and uh yeah i i actually um uh looked around and uh i checked for what was available for, for classes uh, in regards to my sensibilities, right? And uh, what I really wanted to do was drawing pretty little drawings for the video game industry. When I was 13, 14 years old, I knew that that's what I wanted to do as an adult. But alas, where, where I came from, uh, which is, it's a city, uh, it's a city near Ottawa, on the French side, um, in Quebec, it's called Getsno Hall, Getsno Hall, whatever, it changed name. Hey, thanks for the follow. Um, so I came from uh, this uh, smaller town, or it's not that much, it's not that much of a small town, but it's more that like, it's, it's, it's not Montreal, it's not cosmopolitan, it's very um, like government based. Thanks for the follow. <laughs> It's a very, um, like, when you work there, you pretty much work for the government. That's kind of like the, the shtick. And um, uh, there was not, not really any schools to learn how to do treaty. So um, since I was not really, like, a mature person, I was not necessarily uh, willing to uh, say goodbye to all my friends and my family and move to Montreal, where I could maybe have more of a port an opportunity to learn a treaty. Um so basically um basically i actually decided to just go for for something else i went for um um i studied in in um uh it basically like technology and uh i actually ended up um I actually ended up um, going in a, um, well, in Quebec, we call that a technique, which is basically, um, which is basically, um, sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. So it's a, it's a technique and um, basically a technique is um 
the idea is that like you don't really get like a bachelor's degree or anything but you do learn like everything you need to know uh when it comes to um like executing like a task so like it's not really like a very like deep uh, kind of study right but it's one that like gives you a job after so basically it's um it's a three-year program and uh once that you are done with this technique you uh can be hired by the government it's the kind of job that we get in this area government jobs and whatnot and uh, I actually got a job uh, right away working for the government uh, because they gave me like um, a um, what's a was a st stage in uh, English a internship. Yeah, there was like an internship in um, in um, sorry, give me a sec. I see that my actually my baby is awake. I actually might need to go help my wife. We'll see. Well, I'll continue my story uh, in the meantime. Um, Okay, uh, actually, you know what? Um, I'll be right back. Sorry, everyone. Uh, I'll be uh, back as soon as I can, but I think I, I need to go help my uh, help my wife. So, uh, be right.
All right. I am back. I am back. Yeah, baby had a bad dream. But he's fine now. Uh, first time chatter. CG NATO. Uh, Super Meat Boy, hi. It's funny because I was listening to the soundtrack of Super Meat Boy a few uh, minutes ago. Trade school, yep. Yeah. Um, so... Let me get back to, to that story. Um, so yeah, basically, um, I actually learned how to become a, uh, after the, uh, my high school, I, I went to go study and I learned how to be somebody that can repair computers. Uh, I know like nothing about computers, <laughs> but that's what I studied in. Because uh, being a 3D artist was not really something that was available for, for me at the time. And um, like I kind of like knew computers and stuff. I didn't like it. But um, yeah. So I went to go there. Go work at the government. And um, it was fun for a little while. But after like three, three years... I really felt like there was like something missing in my life, something really important. And um, I didn't really know what it was. At first, I thought that it was actually because I needed the, uh, to be in a relationship with uh, someone. And um, I actually had... Um, I had a few... Um, I met a few a uh, few girls and uh one of them uh, became my girlfriend and uh it was uh it was fun and everything but um uh it didn't up didn't end up working and uh now I I I know that uh one of the reasons why it didn't work is because I was actually extremely uh, clingy and um in the moment I I was not mature enough to um to know that that's, that was the reason, um, like, I just thought that she was, uh, like a mean person or blah, 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 or whatever. But, um, it took me my best friend to make me realize that I was, um, a bit heavy, uh, in that period of time. And, um, it actually made me self reflect a lot about like why I'm doing this, especially doing that to people that I love. Um, and uh, a few of my friend expressed this idea that like maybe I needed to change a few things in my life. Um, and some of them like straightforward mentioned like, like what are you doing at the government? Like, I mean, you've been drawing all your life. You should actually pursue something like that, right? Like that would actually make you feel probably like uh, like you have a purpose and that sort of stuff. And I think at the time when my friends were saying that, although they were absolutely right, I think maybe I was a little bit too depressed to really uh, like realize that. And um, but this one guy at the government. Uh, it's a guy that I, um, I met, uh, because I went one day to repair his computer and I just thought the guy was super funny and super cool. And, uh, we actually bonded because, okay, so this is like deep lore Quebec, but, um, there is, um, there's a, a comedian in Quebec called François Pérus. F François Pérus, if I say it in English, like with, a, with an English accent. Um, François Pérus, uh, he's basically like a guy that makes like uh, comic sketches, but just just like audio, kind of like a bit like a, like just imagine like the, the Jerky Boys or like Adam Sandler, like his audio tapes. But uh, it's not like pranks or anything. It's more like really like sketches, let's say. And um, he was really great. He's like a legend in Quebec. Eh, you see. 
Platoonville, François Beres, Les Deux Minutes du Peuple. Yep, that's what it is. And um, so, yeah, you like really like a Quebecer legend. In France as well, true. He actually uh, did a couple of... Uh, of uh, Part of his career was in France as well. Well, anyways, so basically, it's like fans of François Pérez, they basically know like the sketches by heart. So I was like in this, well, at the cubicle of my friend, well, well the person that became my friend. Was at the cubicle and uh, basically I uh, was just repairing the computer and he was like hanging around in the cubicle. And um, at some point I just like said something to myself kind of, and it was uh, a reference to uh, François Pérez. And uh, unprompted, he basically answered with the like the follow up to the joke, right? And like instantly was like, oh, like instant connection. Like we bonded over a stupid fucking joke from François Pérez. But like, you see that event, like talk about butterfly, butterfly effect, because I started to hang out with that guy a lot. And uh, at some point during that phase that I'm talking about, that I was really depressed, um, he, he, we, we, we used to have, uh, have like a coffee like every, almost every day around like three or something, just because we became friends, right? Started to go to his place, have supper with him and his wife. And um, this guy was actually from Montreal. And, um, at some point, he, he came to me during one of our coffee breaks and he brought me this um, newspaper saying uh, that Ubisoft in Montreal has a open door, like an open house, I should say, maybe. So yeah, we had like a open house at uh, Ubisoft, and um, the um, basically what he told me is like, okay, you know what, dude? Right now you're depressed. Clearly, you need something. Something must change in your life. There's this company called Ubisoft. They make games in Montreal. You need to um, go there. And see if maybe your future uh, lies with them. And I was like, ah, well, you know what? Like, I don't know. Is this, that? It's Montreal. It's far. I don't know. I don't know. And he was like, okay, look, dude, we're we're going to have like a boys uh, boys weekend, okay? Dude weekend. We're gonna go to Montreal. That's where I come from. I know a shit ton of places. Like with excellent food, excellent beer, all that jazz. We're going to go have fun. And I s just ask you that we go to this um, open house so you can actually like see uh, what's up with uh, this industry. Like maybe you'll like it. Maybe you'll meet someone that will be able to recommend you something and... Who knows? Just just go. So I was like, ah, all right, I guess you're right. So we actually went to Montreal, and um, it was a really fucking fun time. It was really great to get me out of my funk. Like, I really, like, needed something like that. So, like, we went to that place, we went to that bar, and then at some point, all right, it's time for the open house. Uh, so we went to uh, where uh, Ubisoft is on the uh, Rue Saint-Laurent. Sinara Street in Montreal, and um, uh, there were three three waiting lines, <laughs> and I didn't know that there were three waiting lines. I just saw one line and I got into it. But the thing is that they were separating people that were there to see the art department, people that were there to see the like administrative department and the people that were there to see the game testing department and by accident i went into the game test 
the game testing line. So I waited, waited there for like one, two hours to get in. And at some point, uh, we got in and then it's like, we were like, we were kind of like late in the day. So we, it was like the last like tour, let's say. And, uh, the, uh, like in the middle of like the tour, I was like, yeah, it's not really like talking about the stuff I was, I thought they were going to talk about. And, uh, the guys there, they were like, oh, um, well, I mean, it's just the stuff for testing, you know? And I was like, oh, uh, I want to see the things for, for artists. And, um, basically like the tour guide told me like, oh, well, I mean, that's over. Like the last tour is right now and it's like somewhere else in the building and everything. And it's too late. And, uh, yeah, whoops, exactly. And I was like, oh my fucking God. Like I was already not like feeling super great about myself. And I was like, okay, well, fuck everything. Fuck it. Um, I was really fucking mad at myself for like, not like understanding. For like not understanding like that earlier and re be able to resolve it. <sighs> so basically, um, um, the, uh, sorry, just give me a sec. Okay, I think I, th I think things are fine. So yeah, basically I was like, okay, fucking Christ, I I I missed my opportunity. Got super super mad at myself, um, and I kind of like decided to continue with the guide. And uh, at some point uh, during the 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 the, the tour. Um, there was like this guy walking around uh, the studio during the weekend. And uh, the tour guide was like, oh, uh, and he went to go talk to him. And, and he was like, oh, I think that this guy actually is an artist. So maybe like he'll be able to answer your questions maybe. So um, the guy actually, we went to the guy and the guy was like, uh, oh, well, I mean, right now I'm, I'm busy, but like maybe you can like give me your email i can maybe like write to you or something and uh i was like yeah yeah sure sure like first of all i thought that the guy was not going to reply to my email like i was uh, skeptical about that and also i was like well like i don't know who you are so but yeah whatever like i'll give you my email send me spam i guess <laughs> and um yeah, the kind of like I, I I was like I was not happy with like how things happened, but like I didn't really have like that much like high hopes anyway. So like I was able to enjoy the rest of the of the weekend, even if like that happened. So we had fun and this and that and whatever. Well, like the Monday that I come back to uh to Montreal uh, to to get no the hall, sorry. Um, I received an email from, uh, that guy and, uh, basically he's, uh, sending me like, uh, like, well, he's basically like asking me like, Hey, so you want to, you want to like be part of the industry and stuff. So can you send me like your portfolio so I can see like where you are at and what your skills are? And I might be able to guide you with that. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, so I sent him like a couple of like drawings that I did, like really nothing serious. It was so like, so not serious. And um, the guy sent me a reply. <laughs> and basically, basically he gave me the, the hard truth. He was like, okay, well, dude, um, like, if you want to work in the industry, like you need to go to school uh, in, in 3D because, uh, I mean, although like I can see like potential in, in your drawings and everything, like you will need to 
learn like the craft of doing like 3d models and such or whatever right because like right now like your portfolio is basically just like pencil drawings of stuff you like it's not representative of like a skill that is uh, required to work in the industry so um when i when i read that at first i, I took it like um like a defeat right i was like okay well i don't have it and um I guess I talked to a couple of friends and they were like, dude, I'm sure like you can find a, a teacher that can give you like kind of like a crash. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what happened. Um, I basically like replied to the guy and I was like, yeah, I'm like, I think that's like something that would really be good for me if I actually pursue this. So do you have like any recommendation of things I could do to learn like 3D or whatever? And basically he told me like, okay, well, look, there's this school in Montreal right now that's um it's their last year next year is their last year and it was a school it's a school that was created for only four years and um if you are lucky enough uh maybe what you can do is you can create yourself a portfolio and um inside of your portfolio uh have some anatomy studies have some perspective studies have some this and that if you don't know how to do those i recommend like this book and this book and this book and this book basically like his email was like chock full of like things that i could study and um uh the thing though he told me it's like okay look you're going to need to kind of like rush things a little bit because the school is going to um, choose their students like in two months. So you have two months to uh, create yourself a portfolio and uh, send it to them. And uh, if they accept you, well, in June, you can uh, move to Montreal and uh, study at that sc at this school. And I was like, oh my fucking God, man, that's like a lot of of pressure. I mean, first of all, like I need to create a portfolio in two, in two months. I work a day job at the government. Um, plus like, I mean, it's like, it's a lot of, a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Um, but you know what? I said, okay, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I'll do it. And uh, I also, um, through uh, a friend, I uh, found a guy that could actually give me some like quick crash course of like treaty and stuff. And um, so, uh, like, really, really, really crash course. But still, I mean, at least it was something. So, um, I started to do my portfolio. I studied anatomy. I studied perspective. I studied like some some design uh, some design things. I um, followed all those tutorials and whatever. And what I did is um, when I was working at the government, basically, I was I rushed so that in the first half of the day I was able to um, complete all the tasks that were required of me, so that. I could actually, um, so that I could actually spend the second half of the day, um, kind of like turned away from the entrance of the cubicle, kind of like hiding what I'm doing, and I was basically working on my portfolio, um, and <laughs> and so um, I actually. In two months, I was able to make my portfolio and send it to the school. And, uh, like, the first week, I received a, a phone call from the, um, the school saying, um, all right, uh, you're it. We, you're, uh, you are a candidate for, uh, for our school. And I was like, oh... Oh my god, shit just got real, like, right there. Because that meant that I actually had to go tell my supervisor 
okay, well, you know what? I am quitting in two months because I'm going to Montreal to pursue pursue my possibly my dream. And uh, it was a. It, I thought it would have been a harder decision, but it ended up like being so easy to choose. I was like, like that. I am going for it. I need to try myself at um, at this. I need to see. So I quit my job. I sold my house because I was able to buy a like a, a, a little condo in a hall because uh, my government uh, job was uh, was uh, paying me enough for it. But I had to sell this house, say goodbye to my friends, move to Montreal to a shitty apartment, and uh, like it was really like a, a a diminution in my lifestyle for sure. I had a well-paying job. Now I had no job. Uh, I had a nice condo, small but nice condo. Now I didn't have a, a condo. <laughs> I just had a shitty apartment. And um, yep, I went to go study at this school for a year to learn how to do treaty and stuff. And the really cool part of that story, thanks for the follow. The really cool part of that story is that my first day at school, my first class, the teacher, um, like enters enters the class, and the teacher is the guy that I met at Ubisoft that wrote me the email about what I need to study and what I need to do, and I did not know that. It was a teacher there. He never told me. He just basically told me, like, what to do, like, what to do to get to get a job, uh, to get the uh, no to, to 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 be able to get into um, like the school. Never told me he was a teacher there. So when I saw that, I was like, oh my fucking god, you rascal, you little. Uh, no liar. I was gonna say you little liar, but still, like, like he knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he knew what I needed to do and that sort of stuff. I was like really surprised, but I was really happy with, with the support that he actually gave me. This is the same guy that I was talking about earlier during this stream. The guy that uh, was like actually encouraging me to. Um, to become a character artist, although it's a, a, a difficult industry to um, to go to um, to get in, and um, man, that was cool. It was really great that it happened this way. Like it's like it, within that story. I mean, there's so many people that I owe them like so much, like. I mean, first of all, I owe my parents for being like really supportive about like my my life goals and stuff. But like, I owe my friend to actually always like never forgot that I had this talent and all uh, well, this like un this uh, potential, I should say. And that like always like encouraged me to go through that. There's the guy at the government that like. I'm really happy that like I met that he could actually help me to take the steps to start this journey. Then I have the teacher, well, the, the, the random dude that ended up being my teacher that actually like guided me in the right direction. So like as much as like I worked my fucking ass off to actually like become the person that I am at the end of the day. It's crazy to think that like a lot of things were actually also uh, luck. I mean, you do make your own luck. That's for sure. That's for sure, for sure, for sure. The same way that if you're like 
not calculating your move, you might very not uh, win at poker. But even if like there's a, a certain amount of like luck at poker, uh, there's also a, a question of like understanding how to put really the odds on your sides and that sort of stuff. So um, still, luck is part of the equation, and uh, I consider myself um, uh, very lucky for those things. Very lucky. Tri-quad. Well, I'm uh, I'm happy you're having fun. <laughs> Such a rebel. Yeah, I know. I know. Fuck the government. <laughs> Big win moment. How old were you? Uh, at the government, I was uh, 20 years old. 21 years old. I got a job really quick because, like I said, it was um, uh, when I was at school, I entered the government uh, by doing a, um, a internship. So when you're doing an internship, you're really young, and after the internship, you get hired by the government if you do it, if you did a good job. And uh, I did a good job, so I stayed at the government, got a full time job, and uh, and all the shebang and everything. So yeah, I was um, I was I think I was 20 years old, 19 or 20 years old, because I stayed for the government uh, for three years. And then I moved to uh, learning how to do 3D, and I started my 3D journey around 22 year old, I think, 23, 22, 23. I'm not sure of the math and uh, the math anymore, but something like that. Yeah, it worked out nicely. Full loop, indeed, full loop. Uh, <laughs> he was playing 4D chess. <laughs> yeah, I think he. I think he was. Um, did he start his, his class with a François Pérez joke that would have been like I think if that would have happened I would have like come out of the matrix because it would have been like too much of a shock to reality I think <laughs> yeah things somehow fall into place it's weird sometimes how like it's when it happens it's it's really something ooh polygons pusher buying the wasp thank you for that thanks for letting me know if anybody else is uh, wants to uh to encourage uh me and my work uh, you don't need to, by the way, I am just saying it, like, in case you're actually wondering, um, go to the link under uh, here, follow us, uh, and if you check our store, you'll find a couple of things that maybe you'll like, tutorials, alpha libraries, um, we sell also garage kits, collectibles, statuettes, uh, polygon pusher here. Yeah, I think right. Um, but um, the wasp, thirteen inches. The wasp is this character on the left here. Actually, you can see it. It's one of those two statues here, fifteen inches tall. There's a version that's ten inches tall, and uh, lots of fun. Hours of pleasure. No, it's a it's, it's a cool statue that I. Uh, I'm proud of I'm proud of uh, doing so. Uh, yeah, and you can purchase it, have it beside your desk, and remember me every day. Yay! <laughs> or maybe you can buy it and try to make a voodoo doll out of it start to stab it and stuff and maybe that's what's giving me chest pains and whatever it's a joke i don't have chest pains i'm here to stay baby hopefully
Timing is an important thing to work on if you want to succeed. Yes, you can have pure luck, but like you said, if you have a good timing, you will create your own luck and good stuff will come out to you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's um it's um it's something that's um uh a good moral to remember for anybody that's like working on um their portfolio and like out of school there's this whole thing especially like making contacts and just like knowing people i mean that's how another way that like you actually create your luck as well it's probably age yeah it's probably age i mean the moment that i hit like i think 32 or 30 like my like my <laughs> My life just started to fucking plummet my health and stuff. It's just, I started to have like old man, like stuff starting to happen. Bad knees, bad liver, that sort of stuff. Ah, man, life fucking sucks sometimes. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be saying that right now. Uh, there's some people with much more uh, difficult... Uh, things happening to them but whatever hey um just for the sake of the joke yeah uh aging what a fucking bitch hey, you know what you get wiser you get to know what's really the things that are important for you it's not all that bad it's not all that bad All right, we're actually approaching the end of that stream. And, uh, man, I have not done much during the stream. But I did talk. And that was fun. But, yeah, we're going to have, uh, I'm going to need to do another couple of, like, surprise streams over here to complete that thing and, uh, get to something else eh? jeez hey thanks for the follow because uh yeah i think like, next time i'm going to need to really like separate things into like panels and get more serious about like working those things but i just had so much fun talking it was great but yeah no if i want to get that done i'm gonna have to um step up my game a little bit Hey, whatever. We're not we're not really into that much of a rush to to change anyway. I mean, I did tease like the next thing I'm going to be working on, but like you'll get to see it at some point for sure. That frog Elden Ring character I want to do, like I'll do it at some point. And um, the um, the uh, other thing, the archangels I'm going to follow. Like I have two more characters to do. If I'm not showing the character i'm working on right now is going to be the second one anyway and if it's not even that is going to be another project afterwards like i said i am not stopping that twitch thing anytime soon i'm having way too much fun everybody here is cool you are very encouraging and i want to do even more stuff for years to come so it's a nice time to say thank you all Thank you all for being here since the beginning for those who were here since the beginning thank you for everybody new that are joining us uh thank you for watching thank you for being uh, a positive source of energy for me and uh i wish you all the best i wish you everything everything great um And thanks for all the kind words that you just wrote right there. That's really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, sorry, I just took a second to uh, to read some of the messages. So thanks again. That was really great. And uh, keep safe, uh, stay healthy. Um, for anybody that's in uh, living in misery right now, I wish you the best of luck. I hope that things are going to get resolved for you. Everybody deserves happiness. Everybody deserves to work towards their dream and everything. 
So uh, good luck and uh, thanks for uh, following my stream. And I'm going to wish you a good Sculpt Soiree. Take care, everyone.